this is a classic blown head gasket. The bubbles that are coming out of this radiator are actually uh, hydrocarbons. You can smell the gas. hydrocarbon test and that's measuring the unburned gasoline that's in the cooling system. We've got a five gas analyzer over there. The probe in open air is about five parts per million, six parts per million. Um, that's just what we have in the shop. So I'm going to start the engine and we're going to watch what comes up out of this funnel. So immediately on starting this is what we've got happening inside of a container that's attached to the radiator on this little RAV4. Uh, we've got zero parts per million being measured in the shop right now. Go ahead and stick the probe just above the surface. Okay, so what we're, what we're measuring now is the hydrocarbons, unburned gasoline that's coming out of the cooling system. And if we look over here, watch those numbers change. We're headed above 250 parts per million upper left corner that's the gases that are in the cooling system and theoretically anything above 30 is a problem so all of this bubbling that we got going on is a blown head gasket it's unburned gasoline and compression getting into the cooling system so I saw it above 320 just a second ago so if you smell this, it actually smells like gasoline. Unburned gasoline. This engine is not hot. It's only run for a couple of minutes this morning. This kind of activity on the cooling system is a serious problem. We're going to add air to cylinder number two. done there is add air to cylinder number two and it's blown coolant out of the radiator so our problem child is cylinder number two this is the block of the little RAV4 um, blown head gasket problem no obvious things spotted yet but that's looking down inside the cylinders and the passages around the cylinders. Cylinder number two is the one that we are looking at the closest because that's where we had the antifreeze come out of the radiator when we applied pressure to it. So the head gasket itself is 
pretty thin and there's no obvious signs around the gasket surface itself there's nothing that's uh, glaring so the next thing we're going to do is check the head surface for being flat and see if it's just a warpage that causes this to blow but there isn't anything there's no smoking gun here uh, in the surface of the head or in the gasket normally we can see stuff on the head or on the head surface that would give us some idea that this is where the problem is but right right in here all the way around you can still see the hash marks from the original machining blemish right there but the leak would occur between here and out here all the way around so the next step is to uh, check the surface and make sure that there's no warpage in it and then send the head out for crack testing so that's a cylinder head off the RAV4 so doing a, a head test or a surface check, we can get an eight thousandths feeler gauge underneath the head with a straight edge on it. So we've got eight thousandths of an inch right here, which is about two sheets of paper that we've got a bow in it. If we turn the straight edge from this corner to this corner, got the same problem. So I can get a, an 8,000th feeler gauge underneath here. That's probably closer to 9 or 10. So we've got this big dip right here in the cylinder head. So the first thing we need to do is see if this head can be machined. And the problem with this is that the deck height, this little lip right here, may not make it. And they have to take too much off this head, which makes the head not usable. So the next step for this head is go out to the machine shop, test it for cracks, and machine it flat if possible. So move your end there, Chelsea, and hang on to the other end. So just looking at this from underneath here, you can see the light underneath that. Not a very good picture, but you can see that gap right there. Bit of light. Okay, so what we're going to test here, we have a really light solvent in in these um, in this cylinder. And we're going to check the valves to see if they're seating. Right now, they should be in the fully closed position, so we shouldn't see any air bubbles. So nothing on the yeah, little tiny ones there. So that valve is not seating right there in that one spot. But this one over here, we've got a pretty good size leak. Now these valves are closed right now. They're being held into the cylinder head with a spring. So we should not see this. And on a really good tight valve, that won't be the case. We won't see any leakage. So there's a little bit right there. These are the intake valves. You can see it coming up here at the top. So we've got a leak up here too. And look at this one. This valve is not feeding for, for nothing. So that valve has got a problem. If we were to do a machine work on this without doing a valve job right now, we know that we're gonna have a valve failure in the near future. I've only checked one cylinder, so we're gonna do this one next. Again, this is a really light solvent. This is a real quick down and dirty weather. We've got a good seal on those valves. And this is just shop air, and I probably only got about 50 pounds going there. Wow, look at that. That's not no pressure at all. And look how much leakage we have. So we got a problem on that one. And that one too. So I don't think we need to go any further with this. We have two out of four cylinders that need a valve job. So 
if, if that many need a valve job, the rest of them need it too. Could it be weak springs? Yes. Could it be a bad seat? Yes. Could it be just wear? This engine has 160,000 miles on it. So what I'm going to say is that we need to look for a rebuilt head. That's just way too much, way too much leakage. Would it get by? Yeah, it would for a little while. But we've got the engine torn down. This is the time to fix this problem. So 